Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Thank you for taking time to cruise in today for Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. I'm Randy Weldon, and what's your name? I'm Robert Helmer, and we're glad uh, you joined us. We are your hosts for Cruise In. And uh, hey, welcome to our our home here at Lone Star Community Radio Studios, housed in Conroe Tower. As I said last week, we're high above uh, ground here on the first floor, right above the parking garage. Uh, So if you get a chance, come on in and see. I see they're having some sort of a meeting over there. Yes, they are. All right, we get a break. I'm going over and I'm going to cut my hands and peek in the window, staring (laughs) on them. Hey, um, we've got a couple of people lined up today i think people will find of interest i'm kind of excited you know who our first guest so who do you have on first well we got uh steven cruz uh the founder of uh speed advocates and uh yeah they're pretty active it took me a while to find out they connect uh get contact with steven but uh, we finally did it and got him on but inviting him to the show and he's agreed so he's here and i'm all excited about Probably one of the most active groups. I think you see them on Facebook all the time. They're, they even did a what a nighttime cruise to Galveston. Yeah, they did. Uh, but they did a cruise like just this weekend, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. So we're going to have to ask them about that, how that went. Uh, yeah, they're pretty active, so we need to find out what all they do. Uh, sounds good. And then uh, following him, we've got a gentleman zooming in. Uh, the the main writer, I believe, at this point for the InWheelTime.com podcast. Right. Which has been on and off a couple of different radio stations, including an ESPN affiliate here in town. Right. I catch uh, him every Saturday morning. Yep. Michael Mars is uh, one of the co-hosts, and he'll be with us today. Okay. So um, that that's a pretty good, exciting lineup, I think, for today's show. Yeah, right? I do, too. So uh, how, how are things at the house, man? Um I hear that uh, you might be a little bit warm over there. Yeah, our AC went out last night, uh, and so, yeah, it's been a really bad experience. It makes you wonder how you got through as a child, right, through your childhood, because not everybody had ACs back then. You know, we had, what, 10-foot walls, 10-foot attics, and a ceiling fan in the center of the house. Yeah, it does, still didn't make any difference, does it? Uh, well, it seems like it was just cause cooler back when we were kids. That's, that's all we had, you know. So it seems like we did fine then, but now it's like, no, we can't handle this anymore. <laughs> I can remember when I was a kid, you know, I was I was from up north. Yeah. I was one of those Yankees that never went home um, or never went back. Um, but we had basements, so we didn't have air conditioning, yeah. and it would seem hot and humid, but we had, uh, we had a, a basement. It was always cool there because it was well below ground. You know, and that's where we would like basically go spend the summer, unless we got too noisy and mom and dad threw us outside. Yeah, well, the basements were like the den, wasn't it? Like that—that that was your extra living room. Yeah, it was everybody? the extra living room. Yeah, it's kind of where your washer and dryer went. Maybe yeah. you might have a shower down there, a workshop. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, but we had ours was really nicely. Uh, I don't want to say the floor was finished because it was concrete, uh, and the walls were just concrete block. But we had a television down there, and we had a whole living room set up, so it worked yeah. out pretty good for us. Well, hopefully uh, my repairman is supposed to be out at around 7 o'clock, and hopefully when I get home, there's going to be some AC there. I know even my cat was in stress. <laughs> <laughs> so so, yeah. so if, you're, if your AC guy is going to start at 7 o'clock, I would say by tomorrow morning you might have some air conditioning. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have these things called hotels. Yeah. You yeah. can always migrate yeah. there, and uh, for a few dollars you can stay at one of those. Yeah. Well, my wife was making excuses to go to the store just to get in the AC in the car. <laughs> so I would, like, I would too. Oh, I forgot this. I got to go back. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd find any business that would let me in. So, um, Well, I hope you get air conditioning back, man, yeah. and uh, you know, hopefully you'll be able to like get a shower before yeah. you show up next time. And one thing I just want to say is uh, if people can catch the episode we just did yesterday with Eric – that's a, a great young man. I think everybody needs to watch that show. I, I was very impressed with him. So it's like, you, you got any doubts about the youth? Do you need to check that out? Yeah, he said he said some pretty uh, pretty grown-up things, I Yes, thought. he did. Yeah. 
Yeah, that man, that, that a young man's going to go some places. Yeah, I look forward to. Hopefully, I'll be around long enough to see him go some places. Right. But, uh, yeah. No. He he was he was pretty grown up for uh, for a guy his age. So. Right. Um, hey, what uh, what do you do? You have any uh, car information for us? Well, we got some history done over here. Uh, did you know that the in 1884 that the first production standard electric car capable of being reproduced and sold to the public was unveiled? And this is 1884. Uh, did who, you know? Wait that, a minute. Wait a minute. Who made it? Uh, let's see. If we got a name here. I don't see a name for the 1884 model. Did you? And another one's here for the early 1900s. One third. Did you know that in early 1900s, one third of all vehicles on the road were electric? No, I didn't know. That's that. a pretty good statistic. You know, so it's you know that they came out, but. They shortly disappeared around 1920 with the introduction of gasoline and Henry Ford. So it's kind of like he he mass produced his gasoline combustion engine and kind of put the electric car out, out of business. <laughs> so, so here comes a guy that, that likes to have controlled explosions, and uh, he kind of took the the industry by storm then, right? Right, yeah. and and you know he he built the model was it the Model A or the Model T first? I thought it was a Model T. But Model T, what yeah, do I know? but his his business goal was, you know, a car in every driveway, a Model T in every driveway. An so affordable car. Affordable yeah. cars, yeah. yeah. So I think that's probably one of the one of the ideas. No, I mean, that was through mass production. It was also through uh, employing a lot of people. Yeah, so. well, he was the creator of yeah, mass produ- uh, right. Produ- production. Right. I, uh, I I see here also uh, you, had, you had handed me this thing. It says uh, Ferdinand Porsche. Right. Was the founder of the, and if I pronounce this wrong, hey, it's on me. Yeah. Eponymous sports car produced with an electric vehicle called P. Right. And, uh, and that was in 1898. And before creating the world's first hybrid offering, which was powered both by electricity and combustion. And a combustion so engine. That was done by Porsche. Right. So, and he had a P. Yeah. I have to pee every now and then, too. <laughs> and that's a combination that's still, you know, sold after today a lot of people like the hybrid combination a lot, of, a lot of people do like that hybrid yeah yeah you get the you know let the electric and the, the gasoline together uh first time i ever got one of those i was in san francisco they gave me a hybrid and i pulled up to a uh, to a red light leaving the airport um had never driven one before and it sat there i thought it had stopped so i went to crank it again and uh, that's a no-no yeah. No, no different than cranking a combustion engine. It's like, no, no, it's already running. Just all you got to do is press on the gas, and the generator and it starts, would, yeah. and it goes, gets to going. Yep, yeah, yeah. learning experience for yeah. an old guy. I think if you look at all the car magazines right now, you're going to see about eight or nine brand-new electric EVs, and then you might see two or three models of the hybrid. So, yeah, they're still very popular and in production. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the hybrids never really took off, but there are people that like them. A lot of people that like them. Uh, the electric seems to have captured everybody's imagination. Um, and I know you're the biggest EV fan on earth. Yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. And then we got the Mercedes Benz uh, offered up an electric model uh, 1906. This car was adapted as the taxi, so evidently it must have been pretty dependable if it was d- adapted as the taxi in that look in that, in, a, in those cities. Dude, it's still and the it, taxi in Europe. Yeah, and it even developed into a race car in 1907. So the Mercedes race car. Uh, interesting. Yeah. What? Uh, hey, I just I just remembered something. I forgot about this, but today's your birthday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What are you? Uh, 65, 66? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we don't, we don't, we don't <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> well, happy birthday, man! Thank I, you. I saw that I think on Facebook or somewhere. Yeah. Um, hey, I found a, an interesting uh, tire company based out of, uh, I believe they're out of Missouri, uh, Kelsey Tire Inc., and they have the uh, they're the exclusive distributor for. Um, tires that go all the way back like to the, the very first vehicles back to the 1920s right so if you want to find a vintage tire that's who you contact yep. right yeah so you look at somebody one of these big car collectors like uh like gary thomas here in houston 
Um, and he, he sticks really close to making sure his, re, you know, his, his rebuilt cars um, are you know, perfect. Authentic. Yeah. yeah, authentic, right. And so he has his tires. I knew he, I didn't know who he was using, but I knew he used somebody, and I ran into these guys. Um, so if somebody needs a, uh, an original tire, uh, you Something know, I guess. Something maybe with a, what, I think with the Chrysler's had the, like a red wall, like a red line down the side of it. Some of them. Yeah. Some of them had, you know, the old, uh, the older tires had the, the big wide white walls. Uh, but these are like polyglass tires and stuff like that. Right. Um, anyhow, these guys, they, they have the, uh, licensing rights or the mold designs from Goodyear. And so they can make these uh, tires from the original molds. Uh, I think, you know, you, you, terms like polyglass come into play right. for some of this stuff. Um, anyhow, if somebody needs that, it's Kelsey Tire, Inc., the exclusive distributor. Uh, it looks like uh, toll-free in the United States. If anybody wants their number, it's 800-325-0091. Good information there. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's good information to keep. You can also write Kelsey at KelseyTire.com. And um, go online and, and look at their, you can get an email back from them. I'm sure yeah. they have a website as well. I'm sure they've got some early model Mustang tires too. They do have. And again, that's what I'm saying. You know, Gary was getting his reproduced there. So right. um, so that's, uh, that's something that I ran across and I thought for the people that are restoring cars might be extremely helpful out there. Right. So what, uh, you got anything else on your slate over there? No, I don't. <laughs> you're, you're, how, how did your recall ha- have you fixed that yet no nah, no nah, I, I spent time today going to the yeah. through the ct scanner that was uh that was my day after i got to the to the uh medical facility that had the ct scanning equipment and uh i got out from behind a lady that was counting she didn't have enough money so she had some dollar bills there and then she was emptying her purse i mean seriously upside down and counting every penny that she right. had in there which she had a good collection of pennies um, but she did find her high school ring. So, uh, but this lady must've been, uh, I mean, I'm old, but she made me look pretty young right then. So <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the majority of my day. Uh, getting up here was interesting. Yeah. Uh, I noticed that there's a lot of people now that live North of where we're at in spring, where I'm at in spring. Um, and so there's people that are coming up from Houston that work downtown in Houston that live in the woodlands and they're trying to exit the woodlands parkway. It comes, becomes a complete slowdown. But then the people that are coming out from the woodlands on like sawdust, they're trying to get onto the freeway. Now is creating a backup that carries uh, quite a bit of time trying to get onto the the freeway at all. Uh, that just creates a mess in getting up here. But uh, yeah, you know, so it's just your, typical con- congestion. Okay, what's your plans for the weekend? Any car events? Well, you know, we've got that big one down there at uh, NRG. NRG, yeah. I'm going to go down there Saturday and uh, going to check everything out and i will do a review and on the next podcast we'll tell you if that was a show to go to or not <laughs> and hopefully we'll see how you know well it looks like they're getting a good turnout i saw debbie miller's down there uh she's set up already with yeah. the tweety, tweety i've seen also truck. uh steve green had his whole crew uh had they were taking pictures and they were doing the same setup that they were doing at autorama so I'm pretty sure if he's got his old crew, that everything's going really smoothly as far as the park out, the parking layout, and how they lay out the show. Uh, his his group is relaxed atmosphere, and a great bunch of guys, real professional. So, Jackie Hansen's entered his car down there. You should talk to Jackie and see if we can get him to come in the studio because he's got one heck of a nice car. He puts he's got Fireman Jack Productions also that he does stuff with. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice to have him up here, or at least get him to do a Zoom call in. Yeah, uh, he he lives out in some place called Cat Springs. I'm not sure they have internet out there yet, but I hear they're going to get it soon if they don't have it already. Okay, and one of the things uh, I'm off all next week, so one of the things we wanted to do was go to Gullo and see if they didn't have the dark horse. If they do, we'd like to take it out for a test drive and do a review. Yeah, bring it up here to the studio the day yeah. we we scheduled to record and uh, yeah. We'll take it for a spin around the block here. Go race some EVs. Yeah, and and, and <laughs> I don't know when you're going to schedule. I'm sure you have to look at the calendar. Uh, you know, go race EVs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll be working in a federal prison on uh, on Friday, so I'll be over in Beaumont. Oh, okay. Um, hanging out with my closest friends over there. Putting in servers, huh? 
uh, I think I'm adding a, an in-house channel or something on that one. Okay. So. Um, and then uh, the north side is having their cruise on the 24th going through the National Forest. Yeah, That's, but I got a flyer today for September 21st. Wild Horse Mustangs putting on their fall open car show at um, out in Silsby at Silsby Ford. Right. So that's, so that's coming up. That's coming up September twenty first. Uh, Wild Horse Mustang Club out of uh, Beaumont, and uh, th- that's always a good show. Yep. Always have a lot of fun at that. And I guess you're going to be the DJ. Uh, yeah, they've been in. Uh, they they they're still putting up with me over there. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't see how. No, they, <laughs> they they don't either. But I think it has uh, involved it's drinking, like, drinking yeah. or something, and making that decision. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, uh, we always debate the playlist. Well, Robert loves my <laughs> playlists, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always tickled with them. Yeah. Um, anyhow, that that'll be a good one. That'll be held at Silsby Ford, and uh, Saturday, September 21st. They didn't have a spring show this year because they got rained out. And, you know, we're in a high hurricane season right now, August and September. And so I'm praying that they um, they don't get rained out in September. Right. Because this has been one heck of a wet year so far. Yeah. And they've been doing it at the dealership there for, for quite a while, haven't they? They have, yep. Yeah, that dealer treats them real well. It's, and speaking uh, of uh, quite a while, how long has uh, Wild Horse been in existence? I don't know for sure. I, I think about 22 years 22. now. But this particular fall show is their 15th annual show. Okay. So, uh, and I, the proceeds are going to go, uh, I believe to, uh, it's some sort of equestrian horse treatment for people that are kind of have PTSD and stuff like that. Yeah. So all these Mustang clubs have pretty much been around a while, haven't they? The Mustang club of Houston has been around for 30 years. Uh, North side's what? 2008. Yeah. Uh, technically I think 2009. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a little more than 15 years. Yeah. So yeah, quite a few of them been around. Uh, the one that was in that was there in Beaumont before Southeast Mustang yeah, Club. Yeah, they finally folded and right. asked us to uh, rescind the charter on that one. Uh, right. They just got, had too many, and too few people there. And that's where we need to get the youth in because that one just aged out. Right, and that happens. Yeah. Uh, what mm-hmm. was the club that, that we used to judge for that they they paid us to judge because oh the North Houston Cruisers. Yeah, and they they originally. Started as you know with a lot of impact in the community, right. uh, they started getting older uh, to the point that they couldn't get up and down mm-hmm. off the ground. So they were paying us to judge their cars. That's right. And then they just finally aged out and uh, yeah, just folded. can't get the young people to join an organized club. It seems like so. That's one thing we're still re- researching and trying to find the answer to. How do we get the young people involved? Well, that's why we had Eric uh, Dunlavey right. in here yesterday. I think uh, answering some of that. Yep. And I, and I thought he did a good job. He brought us some really good points. And uh, maybe even Stephen, speed advocates today, could kind of maybe hit us around there and give us an idea well, why. He's a younger guy. It's, right. He's probably got some pretty good ideas for yeah. that. So, Hey, uh, I, I, I forgot to mention, you know, you and I are here, but uh, we've also got our sound engineer and producer uh, back in the sound booth behind the protective glass. Is uh, he? I, I can, I can kind of see him out of yeah. the corner of my eye over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't want to. We don't not want to uh, do this program without giving him some sort of recognition here, because uh, he's the one keeping us all uh, on time and and keeping a sound check going yeah. and stuff like that. So make it look like we know what we're doing. Uh, it's certainly a big help. <laughs> Somebody's got to help us with this stuff. So he, he's been very instrumental in helping us. Um, anyhow, I think it's probably time that we give uh, get out of here station and give break. a little little bit of recognition to the station. Uh, This is Cruising Car Club Talk on Lone Star 104.5 and 106.1 FM. For those of you that are interested in joining us from around the globe, you can stream us from IRLoneStar.com on Facebook or on YouTube. I'm Randy Weldon. That's Robert Robert Helmer, and we'll be right back. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture.
And we are back with appreciation for you taking time to spend with us this afternoon and cruise in Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. This segment, our guest in the studio is Stephen Cruz of Speed Advocates. And Stephen, welcome here. We appreciate you taking time to come up. Good afternoon. Great last name. <laughs> yeah, it is, isn't it? Ironic. <laughs> yeah. Let's go do a cruise to Galveston. Yeah. Man. Yep. Let's, with yep. Cruz. Let's go do a cruise with Cruz. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, Steve Abbott, it, it, it catches my eye because y'all guys are everywhere. Yes. Uh, yes, we are. I, I, I see posts on Facebook. I see y'all's cruises. And I, I see y'all lined up on the side of the road for it looked like 100 cars. And, okay, mm-hmm. uh, give me an idea of when you started doing this. When I started doing cruises, uh, it's probably uh, roughly about 10 years ago now. So, Honestly, it started with bikes, and it was all by accident. Yeah. Um, when, did, to, when did you actually go by Speed Advocate? Speed Advocates is seven years old now. Seven years old? Seven or eight years old. Actually, this month, as a matter of fact. Like eight years old this month. Yeah. It's been eight years. And uh, you're saying it's not a club. So it it's like, not. how do you define it? Um, Speed Advocates is a social gathering in person for all automotive enthusiasts. Uh, I stay away from the club mentality because a lot of times they end up with like specific car focuses. Um, There's a lot of politics involved, everything like that. Uh, I wanted an all-inclusive, anybody, everybody, families can come out, enjoy it. Um, Getting off of social media and doing it in person. Right. That was that was the whole goal. And I mean, it works pretty well. Yeah. And uh, what's the structure of the organization? I mean, do you have help? Do you have people? To help? I have a few volunteers that are very wonderful helpers. Um, I, unfortunately, due to some of my own personal flaws, I do a lot by myself because I'm very controlling. And yeah. it's it's uh, it's hindered growth a little bit, but it also yeah. keeps keeps me humble and keeps me where I want. I'd yeah. like to be. Yeah. I've done a couple of cruises before and organized them and everything. And you start to learn a lot, like uh, the like, speed. Like, like you should check out your route first. Yes. Well, yeah. Very much yeah, so. Yeah. Well, usually I go a day before or a week before to do the route and get that done and make sure you have a GPS in the car. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one of those, like, permanently installed in my head. It's been something I've had as a kid. I, yeah. I've got a friend named uh, Brent that knows the roads of Texas on the back of his hand yep. so he always knows where he's at yep so i keep telling him brent you lead you lead because you, <laughs> you know where you're at but uh with, when you have a bunch about 20 to 30 cars doing a cruise I, i've learned where the the car in front is maybe going 10 to 20 miles faster or 10 to 20 miles slower and the people are in the back are saying slow down or speed up that is a math over the years, I've never been able to figure out because right. I will get people to be like, man, I was doing X amount of miles an hour. I'm like, I was doing five over the entire time. I don't know why you can't catch me. Right. It makes no sense. Cruise control. I'll take pictures. Yeah. It is a math that does not work in it, cars, it, it does but it. the back of the pack yeah. does not go as slow as the front of the pack. We've had walkie talkies in the car. Yep. And I would be in the back, and I'm like, you're going to have to speed up because we're all jammed up. And he's like, I'm doing 15 miles over the speed limit, and I'm not going any faster. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's really weird how a cruise works like yep. that. Yes. Yeah, you know, we did a cruise one time, an overnight cruise to Austin. Okay. And we got on that, uh, what was it, I-30 or whatever, the, the, mm-hmm. the toll road, right? Mm-hmm. And it's 85, so naturally I was doing 105. I was leading everybody. Boy, did I get my butt handed to me when uh, like when we stopped and the, the, um, the people you, that I'm old, but there were some older people on there that like Mm-mm, we're not doing more than five miles an hour, <laughs> five miles an hour over. Yeah. And uh, so anyhow, <laughs> learning experience, you know, you learn as you go. Yes, yeah. yes. What's what's the largest event you've done? Oh, October sixteenth, twenty sixteen, the day that I will never forget. <laughs> oh, really? Is, that doesn't sound too good. If it's it was <laughs> a experience of a day. It'll be an event that I will likely never do, even though everybody wants me to. So we did the back at this was the start of uh, Speed Advocates. It was called the Galveston Car Cruise One Thousand. Oh, yeah. Uh, over the years, we had built this from like a 40-car cruise to like 600 cars on a monthly basis. 
And then somebody told me, like, what's the chance of getting a thousand cars out there? And I was like, I don't know. Let's try it. Best worst advertising mistake I've ever made. We called it the GCC 1000. And I had people from Florida, Oklahoma, Arizona, Ohio, people driving in from all over the country to do this. And this was before Bucky's in Texas City added the extra pumps. And I counted out, I spent the time to count this out, 887 parking spots in that parking lot. And we had over 1,500 cars. Uh, the whole parking lot was full. The feeder street was double lane packed all the way to 646. And the freeway was backing up. And I was... Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, We had like six volunteers, and yeah. I had no clue what to do. I don't know. I didn't have a heart attack. It was the yeah. most stressful day ever. It was insane. I and remember this, actually. I remember the pictures being posted. I, oh, my God. It's it's absolutely I, I I did not did not expect it at and all. And the local authorities are like, okay, who's in oh, charge? Oh yeah, yeah. they they were <laughs> yes. involved. I remember that. It was not. I mean, I I have a very good relationship yeah. with GPD. Uh, they know me. They know my truck. I mean, I've been doing it doing the Galvin Cruises for ten years now. Um, that was a very hectic day. I, I did mend the relationship after that one. Like it it sucks. Car cruises are really fun. If you got the right group of people, that was a publicity stunt back then. Um, you can't control everybody, and especially right. nowadays, everybody wants to act like idiots. Yeah. And it's so wonderful having a relationship with Galveston that they know that my crew is going to come in. We're going to do a really good job. We're bringing business to the island. We're calm. And I'll snitch somebody out. Like, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've never been shut down by the police. Right. So if you, you had somebody acting up, you're going to... Oh, absolutely. Up. I mean, the, the last time I had an incident was like a year and a half ago. The guy wasn't even on the cruise. It was a Ford Focus with police lights on it that kept driving <laughs> up and down and trying to pull people over. And, of course... <laughs> A GPD fake cop, huh? pulls up and is like, what's going on? I'm like, it's that guy. Like, I don't know anything about him. And then he tried running from the cops, and that was a story of its own. <laughs> I'll but bet that was. He wasn't with us, I know for a fact, because everybody verified that he didn't show up until we were on the island. I was like, okay, well, let's keep it that way. It was probably a city councilman, you know, that kept his Ford focused with lights <laughs> hidden in the garage somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Impersonating an officer is not a good one to get pulled over no, for. Not so what you want to get pulled over for. That's on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all did a nighttime cruise to Galveston. I right? did. Actually, we just did that uh, this last Saturday. Yeah. Um, that turned out pretty good? It was good. We had about 150, 200. My, most of my cruises nowadays with the, the route and the way I plan them, because I only advertise them about 48 to 72 hours in advance, because I four to 600 cars – is not something I enjoy managing. It's, right. it's impossible at that point. I mean, everything comes down to a 1%. 1% chance of there being something happens that's going to be bad. So if there's 100 people, there's right. one chance. If there's 600 people, there's a lot of chances. Um, it was different. I haven't done a night cruise in several years, I've, especially yeah, this it's, route. It's got to be different because I've never done a night cruise. I don't You've been, uh, I'm not either. Okay. No. Logistically, so I one of the reasons why I do this, like I love logistics, especially car cruise logistics. And so the route that I do for Galveston Cruise is probably the most perfect route that there is. And God forbid if anything ever happens to any of my locations where I get kicked out, I don't want to be the guy who does the the, the incident that kicks me out of it. Because um, my, my start location in KD is perfect. It's a big, giant parking lot, great repu great reputation with them, easy access to the feeder street. We have an officer that helps us out of the parking lot, instant access to the freeway. Right. From there, you get on the KD toll road, especially on Sunday mornings. There's no traffic, so you get the whole toll road to yourself until you get to the to downtown. Cruise that all the way to Federal Road. We all wait on Federal Road for the stragglers that couldn't keep up, even though we're not going that fast right and then 225 146 and it's it's just a now that now that 146, yeah, 146 is almost is, done yeah. oh, oh my god that's been a, <laughs> a game changer in it i think i hear about 146 every morning in the traffic radio i i couldn't imagine uh there's still a couple section that they're working on that i can't wait till they get done yeah. they uh, when i say logistics i used to have this thing dialed down i mean uh, we leave at nine nine fifteen. No later than 9.15 because traffic gets really bad. We use a washburn tunnel by 
9 45 yeah. 10 o'clock because occasionally the washburn tunnel's under uh scheduled maintenance which opens at 10 a.m on sunday and then we're usually at our stop in texas city about 11 ish yeah. well now the 146 is done it sped up my whole cruise by about 20 minutes because no more seabrook lights no more chemo lights yeah and it's 70 mile an hour toll road <laughs> So you're not doing my route all the way down 45, hitting every bump. Absolutely <laughs> not. the The GCC 1K was the reason why we quit doing. It. So back when the so I used, I used to do this as Galveston Carkers. That was the name of it and everything. But then I got into doing car meets, and it didn't make sense doing car meets in Willowbrook on a Tuesday night as Galveston Carkers. Right. Um, Back then, we had several incidences and stuff because it was, it was like I said, it was anywhere from 200 to 600 cars. People accidentally rear ending each other, just stupid stuff. But we used to do I 10 to 45, go to Bucky's, go to Galveston. But it always seemed like no matter what we did, it was a cannonball run. Right. Which is not what I ever intended. The, the, the principle and the idea is like, look, we all like to have fun, drive our cars, everything like that. This is a rolling car show. Right. Like two cars deep, it was two cars wide, hundreds of cars deep. Couldn't be any cooler for anybody to ever see. And we've picked up so many people that weren't on cruise, minivans, families pulling up to Bucky's. Like, what's going on? Can we join yeah. you guys? We pick up Porsches that are like, well, one of my favorite stories. Guy was on his way to go have lunch, uh, breakfast with his wife in the Woodlands. This was in Katy at, at the Katy Mills Mall. Gets on a freeway. There's like 30 of us cruising all together. Jumps in with us. Stops with us at Bucky's in Texas City. And he explains. He's like, <laughs> my wife's going to kill me. I'm supposed to be on my way to the Woodlands for breakfast right now. I was like, dude, there's like 40 cars just all cruising together. Y'all are having fun. So I joined in. So next, month, <laughs> next month, I actually met her. She's like, you're the man that my husband's cheating on me with. I'm like, I was like, what do you think? She goes, this is absolutely incredible. I was like, well, Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that you approve. You're not one of those like, you're a blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Your husband has ADHD and was like, oh, of course. <laughs> but back when we used to do it like that, it was always a cannonball run. I did one like an impromptu a couple of years ago where I was like, you know what? Let's nostalgia. Let's do I-10 45 South. Yeah. And when you say nostalgia in and, and, and a 24-hour notice, what are you using? What what social media are you uh, using? To mostly get Facebook, there? Instagram. Um, I've got my website as well, speedadvocates.com. Uh, pretty much every forum out there. I mean, I don't use like X and stuff just because it seems to be a political yeah. bias. What whatever. about Instagram? Uh, everything gets posted on Instagram. Everything. Okay. I, I, I'm slightly lazy in the fact that I post it on Instagram, it automatically shares it to Facebook. It's yeah. super easy. I, I don't really pay attention to analytics and stuff. I have a great following. And I don't want to be one of these, like, I have a million-plus followers, accounts, stuff like that. Once again, it comes down to the 1% rule. It's like, if I have a million followers, Yeah. I don't know if I want to even do car meets because then I have these guys coming over to do takeovers and stuff. And I, have, I am super strict, and I've been arrested twice for hosting car meets. Yeah. I, I've really. never been shut down. I have been arrested for defending my car meets. Now, I, it was just handcuffs. I didn't get booked or anything like that. But it was a fact that the cops had to get involved because somebody was doing something stupid that could have possibly injured somebody's kid. I defended it. I am an a-hole when it comes to defending my events. Right. And people come back because they know that I'm willing to go to jail if it means you and your family is going to be safe. And if I got to sit the night in jail because somebody yeah. had to F around and find out, uh, yeah. kind of... You also do a Rudy's uh, cruise in, don't you? Yes. So How's we do going? Rudy's and Tomball every second for Thursday, except for this month. Uh, that one's really good, uh, especially when the weather's great and everything. We average about 200 cars a night. The parking really? lot holds about 155, and we rotate them. Um, I love that meet for the sim simple fact that it's a 6 to 9, but a lot of people show up between 5.30 and 7.30, and usually about 8, 8.30, everybody's cleared out. Because I do have a thing with Rudy's that I got to clear everybody out at 9, so that way I can get out of there. Right. Um, that That's partially my rule. I want everybody out of the parking lot, make sure the parking lot's clean, everything like that, so that way the relationship, relationship stays very yeah. well. 
Uh, you have DJs or anything out there? I am against DJs at car events. Uh, every single time I've had a DJ at a car event, they play music too loud. They keep asking them to turn it down. They turn. They, they just turn it right back up. It's a social atmosphere. Yeah. I don't need club music in the background. Nobody's out here trying to dance. And <laughs> I I don't want to go yeah. home and then the next morning be like, oh, what concert did you go to last night? Like, it wasn't. It was at a car meet trying to talk <laughs> to the guy next to me. I... I it's just not. It's just not my thing. Well, I'm trying to trying to mix music when you've got a big mix of people. Exactly. Trying to figure out who's listening to what, or you know, or you get start getting complaints Some good on that. Ambient music in the background, which most restaurants have that anyways. Yeah. So if you want, if you want that, go sit on the patio and hang out. But like, if I'm out sitting next to you in your car, I want to hear about what it is that we're talking about. I, I don't want to have to listen. Like, I don't want to hear anything over it. Yeah, you don't want it overpowering you. Yeah, so, no, no, yeah. no, because then I'm not getting actually engaged in the conversation. I'm gonna miss some details. I, I'm a massive car enthusiast. I want to hear everything about your car, what it is that you like about it, what it is that got you into it. Like, I, I, I the, I've experienced so many things doing car things that I, I never would have imagined doing growing up. And I'm I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin, and never did I think I was gonna be hosting car shows i mean i went to car shows with my grandparents and my dad like cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now doing it the other way it's like oh wow this is insane I well it becomes it. a really extended family too doesn't it, it? does yeah it does uh, it, it's uh, it's mind-blowing yeah. it's it's outside of the toxicity of the newest generation and what they're doing it's absolutely amazing the people that you meet the the characters the diversity because you'll you never know walking through a grocery store who's into their cars which is the coolest thing ever is you be walking next to the lady who's in the milk aisle and she could have a 65 mustang sitting in a garage because she's super into hot rods but you'd never know that and then when she comes out you're like wait a second like or you run into the kids that run into their teachers are like, wait, I thought you're just my English teacher that yeah, right. I have to put up with. But you've got a, a blown 69 RSS Camaro. But like, wait, what? Like, yeah. Like, it, it, it's crazy. It's kind of the, uh, uh, what was the guy's name? Gary, um, the, the drag racer. He was a shop teacher. He raced for John Force Racing forever. Oh wow! Okay. And uh, but he was he was a shop teacher, yeah. you know. But he he'd come in over you know on Monday morning with his hands all wrapped because his car caught on fire. You know, <laughs> have to, like, kids would have to help me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, he was a school teacher, man. Yeah. That's what he did for a living. You yep. know. Uh, so yeah, that's the that's the kind of thing you never know. We were talking. We had a 19 year old in here yesterday. Okay. That volunteered to come out. And uh, take part in some of the, the we we do the TWCC first Sunday of every month. We okay. volunteer to help there, and he volunteered, but he was a high school kid getting credit for coming out and doing this on Sunday mornings. Oh, he that's get, awesome! He was getting school credit, which was very cool. Okay, you know, uh, but he said it yesterday. It's like the mix of people that you meet. You've got CEOs from you know these various companies, and you've got guys like Robert and I are just happy that somebody's willing to pay us to do some sort of work. Yeah, you know, and that's the that's the community you end up pulling together it is yeah. uh, and it, man the experience that the experiences that can come from it i mean i i've met people that i wouldn't have imagined ever being in touch with at any chance at all yeah. um the amount of help that I, i've received from the community when i need help uh the amount of help that me and the community itself has been able to do um it's just it's crazy to see like obviously there's always bad weeds there's there's i mean you're, just, you're never gonna get but but the the good outweighs the bad the yeah very much so bar yeah. none like 10x yeah. and i i thoroughly enjoy that and i'm trying i'm i'm trying to figure out where I, my next move is because i don't want to do charity stuff because once again anything politics i, I just stay away from i d firmly believe religion and politics stay out of business uh, but I, I want to be more involved in the community, um, especially in the veteran community and stuff like that, people that are unserved, underprivileged, and everything like that. So I'm trying to figure out how to bring cars and their people and the enjoyment to people that 
don't necessarily get to see it or enjoy it. That's yeah. just, it's not, not part of their normal everyday world. You mentioned as a as business, uh, is this costing you money? Lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's one of the things when, I, is, when it, I started Northside, it, it was, <laughs> yeah, the money, I'd probably put two or $3,000 in that club, starting it off the ground, incorporating it yep. in, in, the, in the insurance and stuff. So yeah, you, People don't understand you're doing this because of a passion. Yes. And, and yeah, this is costing you money. Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I don't get to enjoy the, uh, the true benefits of uh, the cars being expensive. I, I spend all of my money on speed advocates. It does make me some ca- – it certainly hasn't been positive yet. I have a day job for that one. Right. Uh, it is a very expensive hobby. I just probably should lean towards being more selfish and buying a car and a project car and spending all the money on that one. But I am, I'm still currently building the brand. I'm trying to keep merchandise on you right. know, all the time, renting out venues. Imagine, um, you know, getting the T-shirts made and the logos made and stickers made, and yeah, it all costs money. Yes, yes, it does. Well, and yeah. I suck at sales, so <laughs> it's, I'll show. I'll be at. I mean, I'll do ten car meets, and out of those car meets, I won't set up anything I, there won't be a booth set up you right need a market month. person then. i i need a marketing <laughs> person really badly somebody that's like hey look you do what you need to do and let uh, me sell some merchandise right. i have an awesome volunteer that does it when she can come out and she kills it when she does but as far as like i i, I need to get to the point where i've got the money that i could pay somebody full-time yeah. like hey look here's the tent here's the tables here's yeah thousands and, of dollars worth of merchandise sell it and one of the things you were talking about, like you didn't like music at the car to meet. Yes. I did a James Coney Island for a while. Okay. In Humble. And I would spend money on the, the equipment. Yep. And I and I, I did it at night. So I would buy lights. I mm-hmm. would throw lights, lasers, everything. Yeah, that was didn't impress anybody. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's that's another reason why I don't do DJs, man. Those things yeah. are anywhere from a hundred to four hundred dollars yeah. per session, and I'm like, oh, cool. Uh, that on top of I'm not selling any merchandise. Uh, yeah, this is a free event. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I I pay money for regularly and I lose money on it, but it's been absolutely worth it every time. Is I pay for my uh, my police officer to be at the end of the well, at the parking lot to help us get out. Uh, that's worth the money. I'm, I'm so glad those guys those guys actually. Yeah introduced themselves to me it was super it's, awesome it's great having a police officer because oh you will get God. in very a word of experience you will get in very much trouble if you do it at yourself and yes. you go out there yes, and block the traffic yeah yes. but a police officer sees you doing that do not do that okay? we we have <laughs> kind of tried that a couple times and it's bit us every single time yeah. and i'm like nope and these guys reached out to me they actually reached out to me to do security at my events which i was like no offense I do a better job than you guys are going to do because, well, I'm willing to do something. And I was like, but do you do, like, roadblocks? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, I got a job for you, and I need it 100%. And we we worked, we did some bargaining and stuff, and we came up with a number that I was like, I'm comfortable losing this on every cruise because the safety aspect of it alone is 10 times worth that. Right, right, so it is. So that, that one, that yeah. one, the... So what's your future goals for Speed Advocates? My future goals is, like I said, I'd like to be more involved with the community. Um, my my end goal always been for Speed Advocates is, like, once again, uh, it's a business. It's not something I'm looking to make multi-millions of dollars on. Right. If I could get to that point, my all, all, all-time goal has been to be able to fund my search rescue and uh, natural disaster relief. Oh, okay. So, uh during Hurricane Ida was the one that hit Louisiana. We raised fifteen thousand uh, dollars between me and Gas Jockey. I did nine deliveries uh, between truck and trailer of fuel to people in Louisiana yeah. to keep generators running, uh, power machines, and stuff like that. Right. Uh, I couldn't serve in the military because I'm a diabetic. Uh, I do absolutely everything in my physical power when there is natural disasters anywhere in Houston or in Texas or Louisiana to floods, uh, hurricanes, right. tornadoes. Like, I, that would be my end goal. If I can quit, if Speed Advocates could make me the money to quit my day job and I could fund 
those charities just doing that yep. that way i always had like i'd like to have a couple trucks and boats on standby a warehouse where i've got yep. water and non-perishable items that could just constantly it's just like all right hurricane hits get in the trucks grab the yep. boats let's go load up the 18 wheeler take that and let's do it yeah that's have some kind of event where we can just raise some money for that yes i once again, I said the sales, so that's where that's where I really uh, crash yeah. on that one. Well, you and I have done that for Hurricane yeah. Ida, as a matter yep. of fact. Uh, and Nestle stepped up big time, gave us a whole truckload of uh, of really? water. Oh, yes, they did. Wow. We ran it over to uh, Louisiana. That's where I really like who to reach out for and what to ask for is what I really I really find a staple on because when we did all that, I was going everywhere, and I mean I. Some of like H E B gave me super awesome discounts. Walmart gave me super awesome discounts because they know what I was doing. They also wanted to verify, which I don't blame people for. Sure. Um, but like just finding that stuff, I I really started doing that when when Harvey hit, and I realized I was like, I don't have like I know people, but I don't have the niche for like the people that I really need to know. Well, in that particular case, we just had we had somebody that was a a car guy that worked for Nestle. Uh, there you that's go. It, that yep. said, "Hey, would you guys donate?" Yeah. And yep. they stepped right up and did a heck of a job. I mean, so. I was the nice me and me and Gas Jockey have been super awesome. And at the time, we were working on sponsorship deals, and I was doing sales for them. So it was really awesome to buy fuel at cost, and yep. then get them directly from the suppliers, loaded up in the drums, and then go out there because they, we would, I probably would have been two thirds of that fuel, maybe had I actually been like filling it up at a gas station or anything like that. Uh, so that was very fortunate. And they also donated a bunch of fuel as well. So it was nice having stuff like that. And honestly, if people don't think about it, fuel is a very important thing during that stuff when yeah. you ain't got it. Like, yeah. that it was gold. Very important. You're yeah. right. Yeah. It is like gold. Yeah. Stephen, we've got to get out of here and give yeah. some, some recognition to some of these other uh, uh, shows that are on this station. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But thank you for coming in. Uh, how do people get in touch with you? What are your What's your website? Uh, speedadvocates.com, all one word. Uh, and then Speed Advocates on Facebook, Instagram, Roadster app, uh, pretty much anything. I think I also saw it's uh, speedadvocates at gmail.com is your yep. email address. Speedadvocates so, at gmail to reach me on that one. Um, any of those are any of the any of those are a good way to get in touch. Absolutely, with you. I'm I'm on all of them and I'm constantly checking my notifications. And, so. and, and I, we do really appreciate you being here. Oh, I yeah. appreciate the invite. All right, and I think also I saw that you you do a subscription base for you've got people people that will follow and yes. they get kind of special VIP treatment, uh, early notification stuff like that. I think yes, got, okay. yeah, I, I do have a, a subscription plan. Uh, it's like a yearly basis that they pay on, but it it's text notifications, updates, twenty four hour notices, three months advance on events. Uh, sponsorship discounts and everything like that. So, well, man, we appreciate you coming in. We wish you continued success. Thank and let, you. And let us know what we can do to help you get your charity going. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. We're going to get out of here and give some recognition to the station. This is Cruising Car Club Talk on Lone Star 104.5, 106.1 FM. Or you can stream us anywhere on the globe on IRLoneStar.com, on Facebook, or on YouTube. And we'll be right back. Car Enthusiasts of Conroe, FM 104.5 and 106.1 Lone Star Community Radio invites you to shift into gear every Monday from 1 to 2 with Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy for news on all things automotive in the greater Houston-Conroe area. Can't make a live show? We've got you covered. You can find all of our uncut content including full episodes on Spotify, iTunes, Play Store, YouTube, Facebook, and IRLoneStar.com. Again, that's Mondays 1 to 2, Cruising Car Club Talk with Robert and Randy. See you there. We are back again with Cruising Car Club Talk. That's Robert Helmer. I'm Randy Weldon. And this segment we've got uh, zooming into us from Port Arthur, Texas. We've got Mike Mars, co-host and somewhat creator of In Wheel Time at InWheelTime.com. Mike, how you doing? Great, guys. How are y'all? No complaints over here. No complaints. Well, that's because you're in the air conditioning. Yes. I'm telling you. Well, we're, we're in the air conditioning now, but Robert's air conditioning at the house went yeah, out. Yeah, mine went out. So, Ooh. yeah, we were in the heat all day. So, yeah, we're glad to be in the studio right now. 
<laughs> yes, yes. It's uh, second coming of summer is here. Yeah. So what kind of car are we in? We are in a 24 Dodge Hornet GT, all-wheel oh. drive. How do you like it? I, I, there's a lot of things to like about it. A couple of things, you know, I, I, it's, it, I'm going to call it a younger man's car. Okay. The uh, getting in and out of it because of the bolstering on the seats and stuff because it's a little sporty car. Um, I have to work at it a little bit more than I'd like <laughs> at this age. It says up kind of high. But yeah, it's a, it's a great driver. It gets up and scooter boots real quick. So you you uh, I wanted I, I wanted I appreciate you coming on first of all but I yes. wanted to to uh, ask you about uh, in wheel time uh, you've been doing that for how many years now I've been with it about eleven years uh, Don kind of helped start it right now thirteen years ago actually and uh, I joined a couple of years after things got kind of rolling and kind of been with it ever since so Don Armstrong. Was the guy that actually created in wheel time? He's a car guy. Goes back forever as a car guy. Uh, you were a car guy growing up. I've, I found out through interaction back and forth with you that uh, uh, you and I both hung out. I'm sure Robert did too. Out of East Tex Dragway when it was there. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, that was some years ago. That was years ago. <laughs> and then uh, Jeff Zekin is uh, part of the crew now, also. Yes, sir. So, yep, yep. You know, he came up when uh, uh, we met him through the, the tire company that he worked for. He was a guest, became a regular guest talking about tires. We learned a lot from him, shared a lot. And he um, just got to where he was fitting more and more in. So we kind of worked him into the show and he's got a couple of features. He does really well with it. He's always got some interesting stories. Yeah, that's so. always good for the show, isn't it? Well, all three of you oh, have absolutely. interesting stories. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're very entertaining on there. Well, we try. We try hard. Yeah, and you're an inspiration to Randy and myself. We're like uh, the two kids playing in the sandbox imitating y'all. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to take part of that as a compliment, and part of it I'm going to say I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we, uh, you, you've encouraged us to, to get in here and start doing this, and I think it took us about four years before we finally yeah. walked into the studio. Uh, but we appreciate you uh, staying honest about it. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is kind of a, uh, uh, an evolution of things. You know, when we started out, when, when actually Don started, when I joined the program, we were on an AM radio station, kind of morphed through a couple of different places through the FM. Uh, and, and we were starting to play with the cameras and the, and the live streaming. And, uh, course we were very basic you know using a laptop with some usb cameras there in a very small studio i think you were there randy at that little 94 oh, yeah. studio where you couldn't hardly breathe without breathing <laughs> on each other but it was you know that was where we started and we kind of worked our way up things got better and uh it's kind of like an evolution of things we learned some technology things that really helped out a lot uh it's amazing the technology that's out there now i'm sure you know you're learning that yourself right, absolutely Y'all both, uh, I think everybody on the staff has journalism backgrounds, right? Yes, yes, yes. You know, Don came up through the uh, radio side of it. I mean, he's like 50-something years between radio and TV. Right. Uh, a lot of that was car stuff. You know, he still flies for Channel 13 on the evening helicopter with the traffic reports and things. And uh, he's, if you didn't know it, there's a video out on YouTube about him chasing down a Hellcat Challenger that was stolen. Outran the highway, outran the police, outran the police helicopter, all that stuff coming out of Interstate 10 out of Houston, going east, coming over towards Beaumont. And uh, if you ever get a chance, go out and, and check out the Hellcat chase on YouTube, and it's Don doing the talking and doing the chasing. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Gonna, I'm going to have to look that one up. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I watch uh, Channel 13, so I see Don a lot on there. I see him in the morning sometime, too. Every now yes, and then, he's yes, in a car. He fluctuates between the morning shift and the evening shift, you know, depends on how they got things set up uh, with the schedule. So as you guys have settled in and the longer you've done this, what, what roles do the three of you play uh, in creating the program, pulling it together? Well, I've kind of morphed into the operational side. You know, I like looking up all the stuff. You know, here, here's the new gear. I like to buy the new gear. 
this USB camera doesn't work anymore. We need to move up to a regular type camera. What can we use? I like that part of it. Uh, I like ed editing the videos. Whenever we have videos that we're going to use, I put that together now. That's just the things I like. And of course, Don, he likes the creative side. You know, the, the, the like he'll voice over our commercials. Uh, he's obviously the host because he's got those skills. And uh, so he kind of gets the program going whenever we get a guest that joins us. And then Jeff and I join in and contribute as we can. Right. So, and then uh, Jeff's part of this, what's he, what's he mostly focused on? Jeff is kind of, um, he does some of the features. He's got a couple of specific features that he does, like the race card. Uh, he comes up with just some creative stories. He handles the videos during the show, the, the video switching. He does all of that during the program when we switch cameras or we got to feed a video into our program for the guest or, or the car review that we're doing. Right. We'll have a video for that. And Jeff handles all the controls for all that. Well, then you've got also David Ainsley there, right? That's taking care of sound engineering. I, he's not there all the time, but he's there sometimes. Well, he, he generally, when we have a major problem that we can't fix, he'll come and join us. But he's our remote guy. So when we go remote, do like the Houston Auto Show or Keels and Wheels or something, we have to literally pack up our studio. We haven't got to the point where we've got a complete set of gear for the remotes. So we pack up a lot of our studio gear and we take it to the remote location and set it up. Well, David's there to help us set it up, make sure the boards are connected, make sure the internet's there uh, to, to troubleshoot anything that goes bad because that's what he does. He actually works for a radio a group of radio stations as their engineer. So Things that we might look at for two hours, he ducks that for like two seconds. And he's done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his background. So, I you, when you yeah, guys absolutely. go when when you guys go remote though, you've got a lot of equipment that you're that you're carrying. I've helped load some of it with you guys, <laughs> um, but you've got a lot. And uh, I mean, what's it take to to set that up and tear it down? I was watching the program a couple of weeks ago, and you were, I, I don't the, everything was already packed in the car, and you had to bring it in and set it up in Studio A. Um, and then, uh, I think you were tearing it down to go remote somewhere after that. Yeah. So, so when we decide to go to a remote, then we, we, the Saturday prior, we have to take the stuff out of the studio and we're talking headsets. We've got an extra board. We got switchers, you know, the speakers, cabling tables, all that stuff. So we load all that up and that takes hour, hour and a half or so to get it packed up and get it loaded because. Uh, we're not going directly to the remote location from there. You know, it's the next Saturday. So the gear's got to travel safe enough and, and protected enough that it doesn't get damaged during the week. Right. While we're going back to our regular world. And then when we get there, we allow two hours. So we get there two hours before the remote starts so that we can unpack and get everything set up. And generally speaking, it's we get done about five minutes before it's time to go live. Speaking of remote, where's your next remote? Are you going to be with Steve Green over this weekend? At the no, Texas? we're not. We kind of talked to them. Uh, NRG is a little different world. Yeah. We, have, uh, we deal with them with the Houston Auto Show. So uh, we're hoping that maybe next year we can kind of work things out. But this year we kind of we okay. We had Craig on the show a couple of weeks ago right. talking about it. Uh, hopefully it's going to be real good. I'm going to try and go over there Saturday after the show. I have to go meet a client, I guess you would call her. She wants us to do a remote in October. So I'm going to go over and meet her Saturday after the show because that's one of the things we have to do if we're out on location because we're, we use the Internet. Well, how good an Internet connection do we have? Right. Back when we were strictly audio and doing with radio work, well, it didn't take much to have an audio signal. But if we're going to try and do the video, well, now you got to have a little more bandwidth. So we try and get out there and test it uh, and, and make sure we got enough bandwidth. There's been a couple of times, like up in the Woodlands, uh, Corvette Club up there wanted us to come up there. Beautiful setting, great show. We've seen their pictures. We couldn't do nothing. Yeah, <laughs> there just was no signal there. Was that the Sam Houston Corvette Club? Oh yeah, that's them. No, it wasn't the Sam Houston. I don't believe. Okay. don't remember yeah we had sam Sorry. houston here on the studio a couple of weeks ago yeah yeah oh. 
It, it may have been then. Yeah. It's, it's it's a real nice facility up there in the woodlands, real tree lined, you know, open space. It's right. beautiful. Yeah, they they you use that little park. Yeah, they, they use that little park there right behind the amphitheater. So, yes, that's yep. it. That's yep. it. Yep. Yeah, they got internet yep. across the across the street, just not where you're at over there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we try and, and be as accommodating as we can. We've got, we can cook up to T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon. And, and actually, we've got some technology to kind of put them together to get a better signal. But sometimes it's just not there. Yeah, that, that just, that's got to make the remotes awfully tough when you show up yeah. and can't do anything. What's, what's your, well, uh, that's why we, we, we learned real quick, don't do that. You go test it ahead of time. Yep. That's what I'm going to be doing for this one. And then we're going to be uh, the end of September. A show we really like is Woody's Waterfront Car Show down in oh, San yeah. Juan. Yeah, what a great restaurant dinner. Well, yeah, and the whole setting is just particularly if we get down there and, and which we get down there around six. There's a cool breeze coming off the bay. The sun's coming up. You know, it's just it's just really nice venue for doing this. It's not quite big enough for what he wants to do, uh, but. It's really nice to do it. Yeah. What I was going to ask you is, uh, what's your biggest viewership? What, what, what social media is the bigger viewers? Well, it kind of depends on where we're at. Actually, generally speaking, Facebook is going to be the biggest social media that we've got. Right. Um, and you, that, you know, we're on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and we're actually on our own website as well whenever we're doing the show, uh, live streaming it. Right. Generally, and, Facebook is where we're going to get the most comments from, the biggest numbers from, and then uh, then we kind of roll out into the podcast, things like that. You've gone from a three-hour show to a two-hour show, or? Yes, we did. We we had a couple of a uh, couple of things going on there, a couple of reasons. One thing we we learned is our West Coast. There's a lot of stuff that goes on out on the West Coast. Well, they don't like getting up at 7 or 7.30 out there on the West Coast. They just don't like doing that. So we kind of shifted our hours to, to help accommodate them a little bit. Plus, the Houston Auto Show, Heels and Wheels, most of the bigger type shows that we do all start at 10 o'clock. Right. So we delay our opening anyway to, to accommodate them. So it kind of fits in generally better than that. And then if we have something else comes up like tailpipes and tacos, they want to do 8 to 11, we can do that. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not much on getting up at 7.30 no, in this not. time zone. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll be quite honest with you. Some of it had to do with the fact that if we have to be over here someplace at 6 o'clock, I leave here at 3.30. Yep. And uh, That's a tough one. <laughs> to say the least. So the guys, you know, we, we talked about it, kind of looked at everything, and, and kind of went with this. We're going to see how this works out. No, I think it'll work fine. I'll, at least you, you've got me following you because I can get up. I'll be up in time at least for that. You know? um, do you have uh, any sort of a anything you want to add for people that might be interested in starting a podcast of their own? <laughs> Don't follow Robert and Randy. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that one's coming. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I have to tell you that, that for me, Part of it is is every Saturday morning, I look forward to getting over there with Don and Jeff, and, and we spend about an hour getting things set up and getting things turned on and testing, and there's a lot of talk goes on during that hour. Um, and then during the show, we just it's a feeling of camaraderie, and some of the people that I've talked to on the various podcasting sites, uh, it's a lot of it there. The guys that do a standalone it's, it's really comes down to either them talking to themselves, basically like a disc jockey used right. to, or they're one-on-one -on -one with a guest. And, and that's okay, and I think that's fine, but I happen to like it to where the three of us are involved because something that one of the other two will say will generate something that I want to ask the guest. And it just it's just the idea, and it's such a neat way to meet people. You know, the, the, in the car world in particular, some of the people that we've met, some of the people we've talked to, um, particularly of late out in California, there's a, a whole different car culture out there, and they look at things differently. Yeah. And, and I would encourage anybody that wants to do that, whether you're talking about cars, 
or, or I think true crime is a big segment in the podcasting world for some reason that I, th- I would encourage anybody to do it. Yeah. Now don't do it. If you think you're going to get rich, I mean, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. yeah, it's a whole different ball game there. Isn't yeah. it? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I think it's, a uh, whether you do it as a hobby or you try to make a job out of it, I, I think it's great. When you have three people like that and you got a great flow going, that's 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 pretty neat, unique. Well, we we think it is, and we we get a lot of positive feedback from our guests that uh, you know they enjoy joining us. Uh, sometimes we wish we had a little more time with them because things get on a roll. You know, yeah. you get to talking, and oh, we got to So yeah. we just next thing you know, you're out of time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to invite you back in a week or two because we got some more questions for yeah. you and kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. That, um, you guys, uh, every time you, you, you've been gracious enough to have me on there a few times, uh, but it's, it's, you make it fun. You make it a lot of fun to interact with you guys and, uh, you just make you feel like you're really at home. And, uh, even seeing you guys on site, you guys came out to the Lone Star Nationals. Uh, did that on site with us out there. Matter of fact, you yeah. came out early to check out the internet there. Uh, and then you guys were there a day of the show. Uh, but, uh, it's always, uh, it's, uh, it's like you've, you're, you become part of your family yeah. and, uh, it makes it easy to stay in touch and follow you guys. T- telling Randy's a great standby, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ray, I will tell you this. Randy has always been great about, you know, it was kind of, you know, as we got to know him a little bit better and things, but you know, he knows everybody in the car club. World, yes, he does. Obviously. Yeah. And then it's okay, Randy, who, who can I call? I, I need one more guest for Saturday, you know, and he'll always have somebody to call or he'll make the introduction. And sometimes it's Randy. Yeah. Can you join us this yeah. Saturday? You know, yeah. I know it's only like 24 hours notice. Can you do it? <laughs> He's always been very supportive and helped us out on anything like that. Yeah. You, you know, and I, but I appreciate the opportunity to just get on with you guys and, and just to kick around and have a good time. Uh, but, uh, I will email you when we're done. Uh, I've got somebody that's releasing a new book and, uh, you're going to want to get them on for an interview. Uh, they're also well known in the, uh, in the automotive world. So, uh, I'll send you that information. Yeah, please do. We, we, we've gotten pretty good at doing books and authors. We try and wait until maybe father's day or something when we can, but we just had a gentleman out in California that's working on a, a, a series of Porsche books, you know, Porsche history. Now, we're not talking about a 400-page book. We're talking about a 400-page volume one. And he's got Porsche has taken him over to Germany to look at the records and things like that. He's working on, there'll be several books over the next few years to really detail out Porsche. And some of the stories that he has come up with. It's just, it's amazing. So we love doing stuff like that. Yeah, well, I, I think you'll like this one. It's, uh, I think it's entitled Mustang 60 Years or something like that. Uh, yeah. Of course, you knew it was going to be about the Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Tell them also we get a finder's fee, right? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't found a finder's fee anywhere yet. But, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mike, how do, how do people get, uh, get in touch with you? The easiest way to get in touch with us is uh, we use info. I-N-F-O at inwheeltime.com. Everything comes in and uh, through there. That way you don't worry about whose name you got to send it to, but just info at inwheeltime.com. And then if they if they want to see your show uh, or follow along, what, uh, what are the avenues there that they can uh, c- connect online and follow you? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> So, so we're live. We do our show live Saturday mornings. Right now, we're doing from ten to twelve. We're on iHeartRadio with a simulcast. Well, you just look for In Wheel Time on iHeart. We do a simulcast on YouTube, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, and our website InWheelTime.com. We actually stream the live portion of the show to that. And then, really, what we do is we use that material to create a podcast for the following week. So we'll take and create four separate guest podcasts for the following week. We'll have the car reviews on a couple of days. Jeff's features will be in there. And we use that as our podcast material. And that is called InWheelTimeCarTalk.com. InWheelTimeCarTalk.com. 
Those are the and it's uh, the also, edited. You can find that at inwheeltime.com. You can also link to it there on your on your website on your actual website. Yes, sir. Well, Mike Mars, we appreciate you taking time to come in here with us. Uh, we're we're going to end up closing the show right about now. So we we thank you for zooming in from uh, Port Arthur. Uh, home of Janice Joplin. I guess you're just hanging out with Janice's <laughs> memory over there. and uh, In the football field. Got Janice uh, Joplin. We got a bunch of drag <laughs> racers over here, a couple of NHR record holders yeah. over here. So thanks for having us, and uh, good luck to you guys. I think it's great that you're, you're doing this with the car clubs because car clubs are very important to keeping our right. hobby going. That's, they, they that's the idea of us to tie all the car clubs together and have a one way of communicating. Yeah, we also absolutely. I think it's great. We also want to show what what some of the good that car clubs do to give back yeah. to the communities here. So. And also, let us know how we get these car reviews. We would love to. I'd love to be able to take a car home for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's. Uh, it took me about three years working to get my first one. So I'll I'll tell you what I know, and that's about as far as I can do. Okay. Yeah. Robert's just looking for anything with air conditioning right yeah. now. Yes. <laughs> Mike, once again, thank you. Tell Dawn and and, uh, and Jeff that we said hello, and uh, we'll follow along this Saturday at 10 a.m. We're always watching y'all guys. Guys, we really appreciate it, and thank you so much for having us. You, bet. you. you take care. And we're out. We are, and this is Cruising Car Club Talk on Lone Star Community Radio at FM 104.5 and 106.1 can also be streamed on IRLoneStar.com, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, we've got our sound engineer, Dick Schischler, over here. I've got Robert Helmer sitting here. I'm Randy Weldon. And, and I'm Robert Helmer. And before we go, if you'd like to sponsor, we just get in touch. We, that's always a good thing. Yep. Thank you. <laughs>